Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. What we're gonna do today is replace the seal, that little O-ring that's on your clutch cable. So if you got a little bit of oil that's been dribbling out that little port there, it's just like a couple cent O-ring, or with inflation, it's probably a couple dollars. Uh, it's just a cheap little O-ring on there, and uh, if it goes out, uh, you're gonna have to put a new one on there. And to put a new one on there, you have to disconnect your clutch cable from your throwout assembly underneath the derby cover. I will show you all of that. So, let's move in for a closer look. To remove the left side foot peg mount, you have two Allen screws here. They each take a 5 16 Allen wrench. I have an Allen socket in place of an Allen wrench. Uh, it's just a lot handier and a lot stronger. Wait a minute, there we go. You don't actually need an extension this long, I'm just doing this so I can get my hands out of the camera shot. Lefty Lucy, that one free. Pop on over the other side. Lefty Lucy, that one free. Full disclosure, I broke both these bolts free before I did this, before I hit record. So, saves a lot of grief. So hold your foot peg up a little bit. Lefty Lucy, that bolt all the way on out of there. Then, Lefty Lucy, the other one all the way on out of there. Probably blocking all the light there, aren't I? All right. To remove your clutch cover, your derby cover, you're gonna wanna take these six screws out of here. However, they were originally a Torx bit, and I replaced them with Allen screws because I kinda hate Torx bits. I don't remember what size Torx bit it was, but I'll look it up and put it right there on the screen. Cool. Now, the Allen screws I have in here take a 5 30 seconds Allen bit. So we're going to break each one of these free. You want to break them all free because that way you don't have one that's just going crooked and making it extra difficult to get that last screw or two free. Once you get them all free, you can lefty loosey them all out of there. My advice would be leave the top one and the bottom one in for now. We're just doing that to hold the whole thing in place. Now, take the top one out. Why the top one? I don't know. You can take the bottom one out. Take one of them out. Hold the clutch cover in with your other hand. And take the final screw out. You shouldn't get any oil out of here if your bike is up straight. If your bike is leaned over on angle, uh, you're gonna get oil out of this sucker. Then, if it doesn't easily pop off of here, you can take a flathead screwdriver, wiper clean. I recommend doing this down at the bottom in case you scratch it. Just put it up in there and twist a little bit. Cover's gonna fall off of there. Hopefully a little more, less graceful than that. There was a hex bit and a spring that needed to come out of there. Hopefully you've got that thing somewhere because that sits right back up in there on those little flats. That's what holds the adjuster tight. We're not gonna worry about that for the time being. But we're gonna take that piece off and we're gonna put it inside our clutch cover. Now, to replace our seal, we're going to take a knife and put it underneath here and peel this seal right on out. Or maybe we can use our fingernails. Peel that off. If you're saving it for some reason because you're replacing the cover, set in a clean location, set it off to the side. To get the clutch cable out, we have to undo the clutch tension here on the adjuster. So we'll take the jam nut. So there's what looks like two nuts together and then one nut down here. This top, there's the top one here. And then there's that one that's pressed up against it. We're going to break that one that's pressed up against it free. Somewhere or another it's a 12 and 13 millimeter. I'll make this stuff up. i just tell you how it is. Spin them on down there. Spin that jam nut on free. Now, 
you can take the bottom one, it should spin, and you can run the adjustment all the way in. Hopefully you can see this. Clutch cable removal. There's a snap ring right there. I swear to God it's there. Getting this shot has been a bit of a challenge. Take your snap ring pliers. There we go. Take the snap ring off, just like that. Set that in a safe location. Remove the pin. Whoop! Catch it as it falls to the floor. Now you can take your whole lever, pull it forward. Take up that slob in there, pull it to the left, and you can take the cable out of the groove, slide it all the way out of here. To remove the cable, just take this plastic pin right on out of here. Cable comes right out. All right, take your smaller screwdriver, crank that all the way in there too. This little nut is gonna wanna fall out of here. You can actually take it out in your hand there. Oh, uh, the screw, might have to hold the screw in the center there and thread them apart. Take that, set this in a clean location. This is internal mechanical parts. You wanna keep these super, super clean. Now, you can take this whole big disc sucker right out the back here. Here's what you do. You then take this whole big disc, rotate it 180 degrees, you're gonna get almost there, and this piece is gonna come off this little lug here. Do not drop this inside. It hooks right off the end of the cable. If you drop that inside, I'm not sure how far it'll go. I think the clutch will stop it. If it doesn't, you have to take this cover off. If you're taking this cover off already, it's okay. So again, internal engine parts. We're gonna put these over here on a clean rag. And you should be able to twist this sucker on out of here. Comes out just like that. You can just take this O-ring, pick it right up off of here. Now we have our new O-ring here on our clutch cable. So we're going to reinstall the clutch cable. We're going to thread it in here. And we're going to be very, very careful to make sure we do not cross thread that. We're going to try our darndest to make sure it threads in there straight. And because you're spinning the entire clutch cable, this can be a bit tricky. Have lots of patience with this. To give you a tip, when you're installing this, if you aren't sure on the alignment, remember it's threading into this boss right here. There's a hole going all the way through it. So you can look from the front and make sure you're threading in there straight. Make sure you're not doing, make sure you're not going this way or this way or this way or this way, because that's how you're gonna cross thread it. <clears throat> then tighten this up. Tighten it till you feel the threads just kind of bottom out in there. You're just trying to compress that O-ring. Right there is good to go. If I push the cable in from the other end, you can see it right there, and it's ready to be hooked up down here. Then after that, we'll hook it up with the handlebars. Now for reinstalling this big hole honking assembly here. So the snap ring will go in first. So this is your clutch throwout assembly. To explain how this works, if you look down inside here, there's three ball bearings in there. If you take the snap ring off of there, you could actually see the ball bearings in there. Matter of fact, let's do it. So you can take this snap ring right up off of there, set the snap ring in a safe location, hold this flat and lift up off of here. Now you can see down in here, I'm gonna tilt it to the best of my abilities, whoop, without losing them. There's three ball bearings that go in there and they ride inside these ramps here. Now is a good time to give a visual inspection of the ball bearings and of the ramps. There should be ramps in here also. The big thing you wanna make sure is that there is no pitting inside of here. If there's any type of pitting, you know, like little divots, little potholes type thing, and any of that on the ramp surface or on the ball bearings, you're gonna to wanna to replace that. 
because when you pull your clutch, this actually rides up and down on and off your clutch. So when you pull your clutch, it pulls the cable and it goes whoop and expands and goes whoop back in. And that's what actually pushes in on the diaphragm spring. So if those are pitted up at all, that's more force it's going to take out of your left hand when you pull the clutch in. So that's a pain. Nobody wants that. Now, if you're wondering which way it goes in here, this little pin here, or the boss, goes 180 degrees from this piece down here. Remember, it slides in this notch, and then this cable hooks into that little dew sucker right that goes into here. So, next, we'll reinstall the snap ring on here now that we inspected it. Make sure it's down in our little groove there, which it is. So the next thing you're going to want to do is take your clutch cable. Hopefully you can see that. You're going to take your clutch cable and you're going to want to hook it back onto there. You'll see it kind of pops in, pulls forward, locks itself in place. Take this, start almost all the way down, spin it all the way up to 12 o'clock, and should just slide right back on in there. Now, take this shouldered nut, I guess is what we're going to call it, and it goes in there shoulder first. Make sure there's no dirt and debris in there. You're going to have to hold that flat inside there with a flathead screwdriver, and then spin that nut right onto the shaft. Should thread on there nice and easy. If it, bide, if it uh, binds up in any way, something's wrong. Once you get it in there so far to where the hex starts grabbing this whole throw-on assembly, that'll hold it in place, and you can back this off of here. Or basically turn it to the left and set that nut down inside of there. So when setting the throw-out play or the backlash or whatever you want to call it, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to set the distance that this thing has to expand before it compresses the um, uh, diaphragm spring in there. So we're gonna turn this in, as in righty-tighty, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna thread in there, and it's gonna make this whole assembly really loose. So what happens is when you pull your clutch in, it goes like this, it expands out, you let your clutch out, it goes back here and ramps down. So take this, rock it back and forth, Find that seated all the way in place. Then take your flathead screwdriver. Back this screw out to the left. And you're going to do this with a really, really light touch on your fingers. You're going to go until it makes contact. Or you'll feel it just stop. And at that point, that whole throwout assembly has now clamped together onto the ball bearing. So right there, if you go any more, you're going to start pushing the diaphragm spring in and basically be pulling in the clutch just a wee little bit. We don't want that. Also, you need to have just a wee little bit of clearance so oil gets in there around the ball bearings too. So we threaded it till it stopped, and then we're gonna back it off maybe a little less than an eighth of a turn. So to give you an example, stopped is about 10.30. You know, if we're looking at the slot of the screwdriver, we're gonna take it to about 11.30. Not even all the way at 12 o'clock. And that's it. It stays right there. Now, when you reinstall your clutch cover, what's going to, or your derby cover, you have this little nut here with the spring washer on it. And it's got two little flats. When you slide this in here, it's going to grab the flats that are on this shaft. Whoop. And then the spring against the cover will hold it all in place. And that's going to lock your setting in place right there. Setting the primary chain tension. So route your clutch cable wherever it is it needs to be routed. Get your clutch cable ready. You can put this little plastic pin through there. Take that back out of there. So take, get your clutch cable ready. Slide the big eyelet through the clutch lever. Install this little plastic bushing here that holds the clutch in place. And then there's a groove right here. That's what your cable is going to slide through. Now, with that bushing, with the cable attached to the bushing, slide your clutch lever in. Slide the cable through that groove. Then, 
take the pin you took out, slide it back into the clutch. Then from there, you can take your snap ring that you took off, your teeny tiny little snap ring, and you can reinstall your snap ring into that groove on the bottom of the lever. Obviously, you still need to adjust the slop in there, but everything should be a re should be firmly attached now. Now on your clutch cable, slide your rubber slinky thing up out of the way. And remember, the bottom one of this spins. So you can spin that, hopefully, with your hand. And as you're doing this, it's essentially making the sheathy on the cable longer. Make sure this jam nut's just loose and hanging out in the middle. So you're going to crank that cable sleeve until that gap closes. This gap right here closes up on the lever. Once that closes up, a little bit more there. Make sure this part of the cable is seated in there nice and tight. Even give the clutch a couple pulls. Make sure it's not going anywhere. Now you just want to have just a teeny tiny little bit of play right there. So we're going to back the adjuster off just a wee little bit. Until we have just a wee little bit of play. Just enough to, oh right there. Just enough to verify that the clutch cable is loose inside the sheathing. Now that you have that set, you can run the lock nut up. Hold it with one wrench, or hold the cable with one wrench. Jam, lock the jam nut down with the other. Just like that. Then put your rubber slinky back over it. Reinstall your little clips or whatever holds your cable to the frame. Take your spring nut, or the nut with the spring on it, slide it up on there wherever it lines up. Take your gasket, all nice and clean, onto your clean surface here, slide it into the groove. If it doesn't stick, you can take a little general purpose grease and put it on the gasket, and that will help it stick in place. Now you're ready to reinstall your clutch cover. You have this little bump right here, doo -doo, and that goes over the little bump right here where your clutch cable goes. The spring should go into this, the spring there should go into this center disc. So if you look at it from the side as you're installing it, you should be able to see it drop right in there. Then hold it up in place. Careful not to jiggle it around as you do it because you can knock the gasket out. And thread a screw or two back in here. Keep pushing on it until you get two screws in. Make sure they're on opposite sides. That way the cover doesn't go crooked and the gasket doesn't pop out. It's happened to me before. And just make those finger tight just enough to hold the cover in place. Now tighten these up in a crisscross pattern. And of course, torque them to spec afterwards. Now that that's completed, we can reinstall our shifter. To reinstall the shifter, slide your little rubber grommet back on there. Take your shifter itself. Remember to remove your bolt. Slide it back on there in the location you had it, which I can still see with our black magic marker. And tighten that up. I'm going to take my size of this. Can't see it. 5 16 Allen socket or 8 millimeters if that's all you have. And spin the bolts in there. Get the first one in by a few threads. Get the second one in by a few threads. 
and run them all the way in there. And of course, torque them to spec. All right, it's all back together. Wipe all your greasy handprints off it. Check to make sure your clutch works properly and you are ready to go for a ride. That's all I got.